Good evening and welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. I've got a little bit of a bad throat today, so I do apologise. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay. The big plus for you with me having a bad throat is I won't do a long intro. Thanks for joining me once again for a regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. Time now, with it being a Saturday, for an episode of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This one is called The Yankee Pride Matter. First broadcast on the 14th of October, 1950. From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. This is Carl Bush, Johnny. Yeah, Carl, what's new? We've currently got a marine insurance headache down here. I don't know if you're interested, but your commission would be fat. I called you because I had a feeling you know Singapore. Is that right? Yeah, I've been there on a case, and it'll have to be a fat commission to get me back there. The policy is for $300,000. It covers a cargo that's being delayed out there, a time clause. What reason do you have so far? Mechanical trouble on the ship. One breakdown after another. Accidental, sabotage, or both? That's what we want to learn. Come on down after lunch and talk it over. Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Tri-State Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Yankee Pride matter. Expense account item one, a dollar and a half, cab fare to your office. Maritime insurance is a bad gamble at best, Dollar. Looks like we're on the short end of this one. That I know about. I bet on Notre Dame last Saturday. (laughs) You aren't alone. This is a cargo of tin bound for a West Coast plant that's under government contract. Armament. Bearings, I think. Hmm. Well, that's where that time clause you mentioned fits, huh? Right. They got a deadline, so they insured themselves. The way it stands, if that ship doesn't leave Singapore in a week, we start losing 2% a day on 300000 You have an office in Singapore? Yes, but we haven't gotten any satisfaction from them. I don't know. That far away, you're out of touch. What's your man's name? Here. Name's Ells. Vincent Ells. Here's the address. Mm, yeah. Well, I guess I can get the rest of the dope from him. I'll get out of here as soon as I can get space. Good. Nice seeing you, Johnny. Let me know when your plane leaves. I'll send you a bouquet of bourbon or something. Expense account item two, $1,280, airfare and incidental expenses between Hartford and Singapore. In the perverse way of ship and airlines, we arrived with one of Malaya's heavy, muggy dawns coasting in over haze-hidden native villages, the island-studded harbor, and finally settling on the big field. I finished customs by nine, napped in my room at the Hotel Europe till ten, and I was in Tri-State's office by 1 p.m. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Dollar. Sit down. I trust you had a pleasant trip out. Well, it's a little too long to be pleasant, Mr. Ells, but those airline people do everything they can. Yes. You've uh, you've been in the East before? A few times. Now... Then you know that the unexpected is more or less commonplace here. Say, what are you driving at? It's possible that you've come on an extremely dangerous mission, sir. Oh? On the other hand, perhaps it's only coincidence. One of my adjusters has been killed. He was working on this case? Yes, I'm afraid he was. What have you done about it? I turned the matter over to the police. Did you mention the situation, the delayed cargo? I did, but I rather think that they categorized him as an individual rather than as an insurance adjuster. Who was he? A young Chinese, Ku Fo Sun, an intelligent chap. I discussed the matter with him the morning previous to his death. That was two days ago. He told me he was going to visit the ship in question, the Yankee Pride. The men on board said he never arrived. You don't think his death was a coincidence, do you? Instinctively, no, but it's true that death isn't rare in some quarters here. Yeah, so I've heard. Hey, uh, did this boy of yours leave a family? Anyone I can talk to? 
His parents were killed in the last unpleasantness, uh, but there's a brother. They shared quarters. Uh, I'd like to have the address. Of course. It's in uh, Ben Coolant Street. Uh, here you are. I won't bother directing you. Any rickshaw puller will know where it is. But I believe he's employed by a Dutch concern. Uh, wouldn't be at home till evening. That'll work out. I want to go talk to the chief engineer of that ship first anyway. Yes, I suppose you'll have to go. I only beg of you to proceed with great caution. The ship is down at the east docks. I'm in the sack. Come in. Oh, sorry to bother you, Chief. I... Oh. What's the matter with you? Blasting fever. Seems like this climate brings it back. Malaria? Yeah. What do you want aboard? My name's Dollar. I was sent out here by the company that's insuring your cargo. What about it? Well, they're going to start losing money if this ship doesn't get started home in a few days. Well, there's nothing they can do and nothing I can do. I have a bearing flown to me from Hong Kong. When that gets here, I can pump water into the boilers and not before. What do you think about all this mechanical trouble you've been having? What do you mean? Well, has it all been legitimate, or could it have been sabotage? Sabotage? Now, who'd do that? I don't know. Well, it hasn't been sabotage. Bearings go and generators foul up without any help. Ask me. I've been nursing them for 15 years. When do you expect the stuff from Hong Kong? It's hard to say. People don't work the same out here as they do in the States. Well, I'll fly up there myself after your bearing if it'll get you out of here on time. Look, mister, I'm not in any shape to figure out anything now. I'm sick. I'll try and talk to the captain about it. Come back tomorrow. Will you? Uh-huh. Sure, Chief. I know. That fever's rough. <laughs> After dinner that night, I rickshawed towards the address of the dead Chinese adjuster. I crossed over the Singapore River, which winds through the city to separate the native and European quarters, and entered Ben Coolan Street. It was jammed with its people outside to take advantage of the breath of coolness that comes with night. <laughs> We're here, Twan. Good. Which door? Oh, I point. Good. Uh, you go some other place, Twan. I wait. All right, you wait. Uh, are you Mr. Ku? Who asked? I'm an American. I want to talk to you about your brother. I will not talk. Why do you come here? I'm working with a company where your brother worked. I came all the way from America. Why won't you talk to me? You speak the truth? Yes, I have no reason to lie. You come, then. You heard in America about my brother? No, but I'm here in Singapore to do the same job he was doing when he was killed. I wondered if there was some connection. Connection? Was he killed because of what he was doing or for some other reason? I do not know. I did not know what he was doing. Are you telling the truth? Yes. What are you afraid of? Why did you tell me you wouldn't talk about your brother? I do not want to die. Why would you die? Did someone tell you that you would if you talked about it? Yes. I cannot tell anything because I know nothing. That he will not believe. Who? Come on, you can trust me. I, I promise you I won't mention a word of this. He who came here before the police... I told him that my brother and I speak of other things, not work. But he made promise that I die if I speak to police. Who was this man? Did you know him? No, I have never seen him. Was he Oriental or Occidental? English. He would do low work, I think. The work of frightening people for some other. Yeah. 
And you're sure your brother didn't say anything about his work the night or day before he was killed, huh? Anything about a ship named the Yankee Pride? Nothing. I have spent many hours remembering his last words to me. He spoke only of one new thing. A woman. With for soon, there was always new woman. With this one, he was filled with pride and excitement. She was Malayan. Perhaps she brought him death. The man that threatened you, did he ask you about her? He asked me everything that had been talked of. But I was frightened and did not mention her. Do you know her name or where I can find her? You will keep the secret? I won't even mention that I've met you. What will you say? Well, I'll, I'll lie about when I got here. I'll tell her I talked to your brother that night before he died. Ah. Her name is Randi. There's a place of an Arab in Malabar Street. It is called Billy Parker. That is where he spoke of finding her. All right. I'll see if I can. Please. Of course, soon death is a very heavy sorrow. But my death is in the future. Do not come back. To speak further of this would be to waste the future. I won't come back, Mr. Cole. Thanks for the help you've given me. Goodbye. You go other place now. Yeah, I go other place. Malabar Street. Billy Parker. You know that? I know, I know, I know. I didn't bother to go back. The crowd surging around the door I'd come out was enough to tell me what had happened. The future that Mr. Koo had been so anxious to protect had just ceased to exist. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Edmund O'Brien. But first, are you ready to sing it again tonight? You'll find a whole hour full of the day's popular music sung by Eugenie Baird, Alan Dale, Bob Howard, and the Riddler. You'll hear the tuneful riddle songs that lead to Sing It Again's Phantom Voice Treasure Trove. $5,000 in cash and 10000 more in wonder prizes. Be listening again to Sing It Again tonight when it comes your way on most of these same CBS stations. The Phantom's a puzzler, but some CBS listener will win that five grand in cash. And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Telephones are still at a premium in the native quarters of Singapore. I wanted to report what had happened to Vincent Ells and tell him where I was going and why. So I tried to find one, but couldn't. The joint called the Beely Parker was a mixture of nationalities, languages, and tobacco smoke. I spotted two Occidentals as I went in. They ignored me, so I ignored them and elbowed a place at the bar. Hello, boss. What do you drink? Any scotch? Oh, yes, sir. A good scotch. No, I'll take one. Don't mix it. Hey, I'm looking for a girl named Rondi. She hit on her? Rondi? You go table. She serve you, boss. You pay her. Right. Randy! Randy! I am Randy. You got a drink for me. Is all right? I'm glad you did. Sit down. Why did you ask for me? Well, a friend told me about you. You sound American, are you? That's right. I know some Americans. Did one teach you to speak English? You speak very well. No, they do not teach me that. I learned from missionary school in Penang. You are surprised? I didn't know it showed. Everybody is surprised around they went to school. Some American friend told you about me? No, he was Chinese. His name was Ku Fo Soon. Ku Fo Soon. Hmm. He is no friend of mine. He's four clerks. He told you about me? A couple of afternoons ago... Said he was coming here to meet you. 
wanted to meet me all right, but I did not want to meet him. He made fool of him, sir. That would be easy. What did he say about me? Oh, that that you were beautiful, that he was looking forward to seeing you. He said that because he was lonely. I know about men. That's why you think of me tonight? Because you are lonely? As a matter of fact, I am. What is your name? Dollar Johnny Dollar. <laughs> you tease me. <laughs> I'll admit it has a ring to it. No. I tease you. I know the name. In Penang, my father worked for a steamship line with that name. Are you in shipping business? No relation. Shall we get rid of the scotch? How do you say? Bottoms up. <laughs> I think I like this person better now. What do you mean? Because he told you about me. I get tired of these people. I like to talk to you. Randy, you come work. Oh, work. Will you wait for me? Wait for you? Only a little while. Then I stop work. You come to my house. We can talk some more. Please, you wait. <laughs> Randy, are you lying to me, or don't you really know that Kufu Soon is dead? He is dead? I only knew him that one time. Not as well as I know you. How should I find out? And why should I lie to you? Because the chances are that you're the last person to see him before he was killed. How do you know that? Because he was on his way to meet you, and he never came back. There are many places to go in Singapore. Yeah, yeah, but it all keeps returning to you or that place. Pusun's brother was shot right after he told me about you. I did not know he had brother. Tell me, I do not want to talk to you like this. I gave the name of the place to my rickshaw boy. Somebody overheard it. And the shooting took place right after we left. Why would somebody want to keep me away from you? Nobody wants to keep you away from me. You are frightened? Ah, oh, that passed. If they wanted to kill me, they would have by now. Why did you bring me here? I thought you understood. You are in trouble. Why don't you tell me? To listen to you, I would help you. Mm. Forget it. That would be better. I will help you forget, too. I'll make a drink. Hi. You like pie? Sure, sure, anything. Do not think about your dead friends, John. You cannot help them now. You think of me. What else? Easy now. Easy. Sorry to interrupt. Hey, keep your pistol on him, Roy. Right. Well, I'll find out if he's got one. He's not on. Ah, well, you should know, dearie. Well, now, ain't you going to get up? I don't see why I should. Because we're going for a little drive. That's why you should. Are you coming like a gentleman or otherwise? But, boy! Yeah! Oh! What do you make of this? You go to sleep in a river shack? You're not careful now. Stay on your feet. And you wake up on the threshold of a blasted mansion. Hey, give me a hand, Roy. He can't hold his feet yet. All right. You know, you're an important man, Dollar. But don't get big-headed. It's them that's more important. Major, here we are. I'm in the library. Come along. Right you are. Go on, straight ahead. Have you done to him? <laughs> he, uh, he was quite um, violent, sir. Here, help him to the chair. I'd hope this wouldn't happen, Mr. Dollar. Let me look at you. Don't bother. You'll get a foot in the face if you get close enough. I promise you that. Oh, I see. It's obvious that you fancy yourself a difficult man to deal with. But let me share a simple truth. You will accomplish nothing here. Until I allow you to. Those are strong words. I have the power to support them. I know all about you. Why you're here. 
My chief engineer will see that the Yankee pride does not move until I give the word. And when will that be? When I am ready to leave for Mexico. Mex? You're crazy. That ship isn't going to Mexico. Oh, yes it is, Mr. Dollar. Because I have paid well for passage there. You don't buy ship's articles. The Yankee pride says she's going to San Francisco. <laughs> One can buy anything with sufficient funds. The simplest are the petty official signatures needed to make these changes. You'd be amazed at how easily eyes are blinded and ears deafened. You don't agree with me? Up to a point. I understand. You think that I brought you here for the purpose of bargaining with you? There's no need for that. Why am I here? Because I enjoy my power. And at the moment, I'm fighting you and your stumbling, idiotic method. You're proud of your own? What kind of power did it take to bring off the murders of the Coup brothers? I'm not impressed. You will be. I'm going to let you go on with your investigation because you're a harmless pipsqueak. Thanks. How much money will your company lose by further delay? Two percent of $300,000 for each day over schedule. Hmm. Well, please convey to them my thanks. And tell them I shall cover their loss. They won't attempt to prosecute. You may go. Earl and Roy will drive you wherever you wish them to. I retreated to my hotel room. But I knew one thing about him and thought I knew something else. His name, as spotted on an envelope on the way out, seemed to be Major Ralph Dixon. And I had a strong feeling that his weakness was his strength and vice versa. The man was power mad. In spite of my exhaustion, frustration didn't let me sleep too well through the rest of the night. Good morning. Mr. Ells here. This is Dollar. Well, I'm glad you phoned. I worried about what might happen to you last night. Well, don't think for a minute that it didn't happen. What do you know about a Major Ralph Dixon? Ralph Dixon? Yeah. Why, nothing. Who is he? Well, he boasts that he's the man behind our trouble. He's crazy. And I really mean that. Oh? He claims that he's bribed everybody concerned with the Yankee Pride sailing, including port officials. Mr. Dolly, you sound serious. I believe him. Look, you have better entree here than I have. Would you see that you can learn uh, something about the ship's papers being changed to include a Mexican port? Oh, there was no Mexican port. I know that. Well, he says there is. And see what you can... Learn about his visas and passport. And you might even check customs. He's holding the sailing up for something. I say, uh, what are you going to be doing? Well, I'll start at the other end. I know my way around the bottom. run away, did I? I knew you would come back here. You aren't afraid of me, but you will be. Right now, you're afraid of the Major, and I don't blame you. Two men were killed to keep you and the rest of his pawns afraid. Yes, I'm afraid of him. Many people are. You and one or two others are going to have to protect him by taking the blame for those two murders. You know that, don't you? That there would be no trouble. That was before I came to town. I say there is going to be trouble. Because I'm going to turn you in. And the Major is so powerful that nobody will believe you when you tell the truth. You'll pay for it all. I believe that. Well, don't you want to help yourself if you can? Why? You know his power? Not like you do, and I don't want to. I think he's crazy. And if I have to, I'll kill him. What can I do? Tell me what's behind it. Gold. From an inland sultanate who is afraid of invasion. They send their gold out when they can. The major is making the arrangements. How much do you know? I've only heard almost 100 million. American standard? Yes, American. That's been delayed in its journey here. What can you do against power like that, Johnny? If we can get high enough, we'll break them. The man I'm working with on this is checking every official the major claims to have paid off. How do you know that? What do you mean by that? You are speaking of Mr. Ayers? That's right. He is only a human being. 
he is as greedy as any of us. I do not think he's asking questions. He's been bought, too. Huh? Yes. You, the captain, the engineer, the officials, L. You too, Johnny. If you were wise. Did they tell you to say that? It does not matter. Yes, they did. They told me to warn you. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Why should you be glad? Because it means he's afraid of me. What else were you supposed to tell me? Only about Mr. Elf. Yeah. Mr. Elf is as good a place to start as any. A check on the tri-state office told me that Elves had left for home, so I followed him there. It was a cottage set back from the street. No one answered my knock. Through the veranda window, I could see why. Vincent Ells was sprawled on the floor, a pistol just beyond his outstretched hand. On the way to Major Dixon's, I stopped at my hotel long enough to get an automatic out of my luggage. What do you want? I... What's the meaning of this? I just left Vincent L's house. Oh, yes. I've been advised that the poor man took his own life. Perhaps you can profit from his act. I think I can. What happened? Did he turn on you? Well, let us say that he didn't appreciate his position with me. He miscalculated my strength. Naturally learned there was nothing left for him to live for. How have you fared? I've done all right. I've finally realized that there's only one way to stop you. Oh? And uh, what is that? To kill you. Have you thought of that? (laughs) See here, I'm a man of influence. You'd not be rewarded, you'd be prosecuted. I think you're a man of influence only in your own mind. Your influence is due partially to money, but more to fear. Els turned on you and you killed him. The girl Rondi would if she weren't afraid. Ah, but she is. She wouldn't be if you were dead. I want you to come with me. And where would we go? Down to the police commissioner where I want you to list every bribe and killing you've been involved in. (laughs) Ridiculous. I have an appointment at the club. Uh, You'll pardon me, I'm sure. I know about the gold, Major. Oh, you do, do you? What do you propose doing about it? I'm going to stop it. You? (laughs) Don't try to leave, Major. Major! You fool. Stupid little fool. I didn't kill him. As it turned out, I didn't have to. Police investigation of the shooting brought out all the truth. The gold was confiscated when it arrived, and after three days of questioning, I was released. Remarks? You may lose two days on the Yankee Pride schedule, but to balance that, you also lost Mr. Ells, an agent you can do without. Expense account item four, $300 miscellaneous. Expense account item five, same as item two. Expense account total, $2,686. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music conducted by Alexander Courage. Edmund O'Brien may soon be seen in the Paramount Pictures production, Warpath. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Bob Sweeney, Tudor Owen, Bill Johnstone, Wally Mayer, Jack Crucian, and Ben Wright. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> This is Bob Stevenson inviting you to join us next week at this time when we'll again bring you Edmund O'Brien as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.
their Saturday night fun with the younger married set when Lucille Ball and her favorite husband come along later this evening on most of these same Columbia stations. Now stay tuned for Vaughn Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where Hopalong Cassidy rides every Saturday night on the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with insurance investigator Johnny Dollar. And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow with The Man Called X going live at 5 p.m. GMT. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. I'll see you tomorrow. Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.